Okay, and we're alive. A collection of blueprints is having an amazing guest today, Mr. Alex Coleman. Did I say it right? You did. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I'm okay, thanks, man. I'm okay. <laughs> thanks for traveling all the way from Oxford. You live from, from Oxford. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How long it took you How to get here? Um, how long did it take me? About just under an hour, perhaps. All right. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that. No um, worries, man. No last worries. time thanks, we were thanks for inviting me. Thanks, thanks for coming over. <laughs> last time when uh, we were hanging out, um, and this is why I'm using this monitor. Everyone can see that Alex Coleman is right on my screen. Oh La man, there's my Facebook. Yeah, exactly. Last time when we were hanging out, Alex was doing this. <laughs> Look at those moves. <laughs> yeah, so now... You did pretty good, right? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean... <laughs> you, you haven't done it. You've done it. You said you've done it a while ago. And, uh, oh, man, like maybe 15... Look at Jonty's Look at Jonty's face. Beautiful. Jonty's beautiful. Jonty's yeah, our is. mate who uh, gets us into wakeboarding. He got me into wakeboarding, and he's one of the coolest guys there is ever okay um so musician you are a musician how long you been doing this um a long time uh maybe man how long have i been playing guitar um say 18 years 18 years probably 18 years and you were like 22 now right good night <laughs> and it looks gloomy. It feels a little creepy that I'm just going through a face. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking to myself, like, what's. Yeah, you have all sorts of stuff there. Like the <laughs> I mean, like that. <laughs> yeah, so musician. Um, oh. Hello. <laughs> I'm just looking for the one where you actually were playing there. I just want to. Yeah, this one looks really nice. What is this? This is a. That's an open mic night. Where's Seamus? <laughs> Very, good. Very good. Got the old. On the other side. Yeah, I have all, all sorts of little gadgets in my thing. And then if you're not that good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be, could be appropriate for, for certain. Very that, good, mate. That's usually for me. Sorry, yeah, I'm just, um, anyone who is uh, watching this podcast, that's uh, almost 22 people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they know that this is totally new setup uh, here in, uh, in London, in uh, my little shed here. And actually, Alex is my very, very first uh, guest, which I'm very... Am I? Thankful. Yeah, for in, in this setup, you are the first one. Actually, I did another podcast just recently, uh, but I went to my mate's house because he had kids and he couldn't leave the house. So I set it yeah. up in his garage, which was it, it was a biggest challenge I ever had. He's really? an he's an armor, like he works on the movie sets as an armor, but the guy's the worst hoarder. Like his garage was oh, so horrible. Just full of stuff. Yes, and I was like trying to just then put stuff on. It was it was just crazy. Um, yeah, so we have a couple little beers. I suppose you're relatively comfortable with being on the camera. Um, yeah. From your bits and pieces. I'm I'm very comfortable. I don't know what people are going to think about my a special bottle opener. Oh, mate, you did a better job than I did. <laughs> Years of practice. Where's your bottle? Give me a little it's clink. Here. It's here. There you go. So all those who uh, see this, it's not alcoholic. Zero alcohol in there. Zero alcohol, yeah. Bex Blue. Oh, but it tastes really good. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. And um, do you believe to those stories that people say like... Um, some people get drunk because they think that it's um, it's a real deal, and it's actually zero percent. Have you heard that? Because I, I remember, what, like a placebo. Yeah, like a placebo effect. Um. Uh, what? So, in other words, some people drink non-alcoholic beer. No, no, no. The story goes: the those people thought that it's a real, be it's a it's alcoholic beer. They were drinking it and they were getting drunk. And then afterwards they were showing uh, there's no alcohol and then all of a sudden they sobered up. Well, that's how the placebo effect works. Yeah, I mean, I, I know I know that placebo, you know, placebo for various things like medications, etc., is a legitimate concept, whether or not... 
I've, I've not heard about people becoming drunk off non-alcohol beer, but um, I can believe that, that people would be... I, d I don't know. I suppose if you didn't know whether it was non-alcoholic or not, yeah, well, similar. You, know, you, you might feel, oh, I'm feeling something, or well, the similar th thing is exactly why they have those uh, trial groups, mm -hmm. placebo group, and just a group, and then they give them placebo group. They're convinced that this is curing them, and then they get healthy. But it's yeah, all yeah. The, it's the mindset. In it's the mind. you thinking, yeah. 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 Um, yeah I mean, that stuff is yeah, that stuff is uh, pretty significant. I think mindset, etc. So um, what um, what made you, not made you, how you decided how you got into music? So you started playing guitar of the bat? Yeah, um, I think I, I think the first, I, I had guitar lessons for about six months or so when I was something like 12, 11 or 12. Um, and that was very much just a, just a phase mm -hmm. through lots of, you know lots of phases oh, oh i'm into this now oh i'm into this oh i'm into this and guitar was just a phase at that point so i had maybe six months of lessons and then that was it mm. for, for another nine years do you remember how years. old you were the, the first time uh, yeah yeah like 11 or 12 you know that's when i had um but it was very much a kind of flash in the pan sort of got guitar learned one or two chords had a few lessons went off it sold the guitar yeah you know, so that really that that isn't when i consider that i started actually properly playing mm -hmm. that came later when i was i went to drama school so I actually tr after i finished high school um i auditioned for drama schools uh, by the suggestion of my drama teacher at, mm. at high school. And then I got offered a scholarship to Guildford School of Acting. Mm. And then I went there. And I think I, I, well, I know that I bought a guitar from a ch sort of like a charity shop. Mm -hmm. There was a guitar in the window and it was about eight pounds or something like that. And right. It was, in a, a, it was a classical style guitar, so like nylon strings. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so then I got that guitar and I think in hindsight, um, you know, as much as anything, I, oh, I just got the bug. But I was also sort of feel like I didn't particularly... Um, you know, I didn't click with anyone at drama school straight away and I was in a new place and the, the guitar was a, a sort of um, a companion of sorts. Mm. But I also, just, I also just got the bug then. That's, mm. that's when I kind of picked it up and then didn't, didn't put it down, if mm. you like. You know, so that's when I look at when I started and that would have been about, what, age 19 or 20. So, yeah, 17, 16, 17, 18 years. You're 37 or 38? 36. You're 36. 36. You're younger than me. I'm younger than you. Yay. So you're you what, 37. <laughs> yeah, 37, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're 85, not 85. 84. Oh, 84. So we're still yeah. the same year. No, we're actually the same year. Oh, is year. it? Okay, yeah. Your birthday yeah. is later in the, during the year, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, mine's October. My, gotcha. my birthday is actually Halloween. Right, because I thought we were the same same age. Yeah, yeah. but well, I'm just there, there, or there, there or thereabouts. Hey. There, or there or thereabouts. Um, so I play. Used to play guitar as well. I actually used to play in a band, and I know I told you this, and you just looked at me like I don't believe you. Like there's no way you can do it. No, I but mean, uh, for me, the reason I got playing guitar was so I grew up in a very Catholic environment, and we used to go do this thing every year. Um, it's like um, a pilgrimage. So we would go on a pilgrimage to. Uh, is it pilgrimage when everyone walk just walk for like yeah, 10 yeah, days yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, we would go to this holy place in Latvia and on the way there I mean I remember the first time when I joined them I just thought like what the hell is th this is all about but so basically they just walk for about I don't know 20 25 30 kilometers a day and as they walk they just play music and everything and and I noticed that whoever the guys were playing guitars they had the most attention from the ladies so, and I was like, okay, this is something I need to get into. And uh, I was all like a proper jockey. All I did, like sports, sports, sports. But then I borrowed guitar from my sister and I started playing. 
little by little and I just self taught my and, and, and my sister she said straight away, There's no way you're gonna learn how to play guitar because you're just so shit but I was just kind of really uh, going for it and then eventually I got it I got the chords and and next thing you know I had a band and I was like fuck you sister I can do this yeah okay okay <laughs> but um, no music in general I did I did write my own music as well so like uh, poetry wise I I think I'm better when as as uh, comparingly with performing like my voice is not as good like comparingly to this amazing uh, situation here. Oh my god, who is this guy? Who is this guy? It does sound quite good through the headphones. Actually. I know, it's the, the, the quality of the headphones. It's all about the headphones. <laughs> yeah, dude. These are good headphones. Big wheels keep on turning. Oh! Come home. Dude, see this my is so good. Look at the hairstyle, man. I know, yeah. Look what was it. going on there? <laughs> What's going on, full stop? <laughs> so good. It's really good, man. How long ago did you do this? Oh, man. Um, can we have an applause for that? Yeah, of course. Where, as you fade it out. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is this is sick. So would you call it as a your cover or you were just Yeah, it's covers. So this is my the, I must then give them a plug, the Alive Network uh, entertainment agency because they're the uh, agency that represents me these days for music and they're such an awesome agent and such an awesome group of people and they've been really nothing but um nothing but quality to me mm. and from the gigs i've done solo and also as a duo and we had a band at one point so i must give them a shout out if uh yeah 100 percent. Uh, if you want your if you want any uh, <laughs> any functions, any events, any weddings, if you need live music, go to these guys. They will sort you out. DJs as well. They do all sorts. So. How long ago was this recorded? Yeah, so I think like two, I think maybe two years, but I can't off the top of my head. I can't. Yeah. At least, at least two years probably. Mm. Actually. Cool. Now this is, this is really good. Yeah. Like that's it. with the loop pedal and. But yeah, I mean, uh, so I look at it now and think there's a few things I could probably do a, a, a little bit, make a little bit of a better job of. But the, the are you talking about your hair haircut, the hairstyle, the hairstyle? Yeah, <laughs> that's, well, that's yeah. I mean, that's, um, I think it looks adorable. How many eggs did you <laughs> yeah, break, break in your onto, head? My, onto my onto my head? <laughs> um, looks awesome. But, it, but it's but it's cool, man. It's it's a good. Uh, they're happy with it and yeah you know, that's the main you know that's the main sort of thing i do as a musician is the cover stuff you know mm. i've done i've got original i've been in a, involved with original projects i've been involved with um you know and i've written my own songs and but uh that's a very difficult industry to, yeah. to get into and and i actually come to you know i actually r enjoy this stuff i enjoy being able to kind of offer that service mm, to, to people mm. you know go to an event for example and make you know provide that for, mm. for people to enjoy oh you know we had a great you you guys made our evening or you know take away memories from the event and so on and so forth well that's that's what it's all about i mean sure. uh, for me i used to compare or host or whatever they call them the events when you are on the stage with a microphone and announce stuff and yeah yeah and 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 the end when they say like they had a fantastic night and it was just so much fun like for me that's the you know that was the first time when i realized that how it's supposed to feel um when you do things what you'd like to do and i remember i had this one example where i did this massive gig it was about two thousand people it was yeah. three days event and i was like with a, mi a radio microphone all the time walking around announcing things interacting with people making jokes or whatever and it was a lot of pressure because you, they used to be a very famous host for that like a, a, a kind of a persona 
and then the first thing when they said to me uh, they're like who, who the hell are you like where's where's our usual guy and i was like shit you know the pressure was on yeah yeah but then by the end nice of the of them yeah say that, man. well and by the end of the third day they were coming over and they're like D dude you actually did better job than this other guy and that was for me and I, i just jumped in the car and i was just about to drive away and my manager the the event manager she was chasing me she's like oh where are you going I was like what do you mean i haven't paid you yet and that's when i was like yeah yeah that I is get amazing paid as well yeah. yeah 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 but but i did not thought about you know yeah money sure. at you're, all you're, you're, you're just, just enjoyed in the, you're just in the in the process of it yeah yeah Yeah, we often say that with the gigs, you know, we get paid to uh, we get paid for the loading in and the gear and loading mm. out the gear and you know mm. the, the kind of uh, obviously on any given day the you know the gig is the, it's there's a there's a degree of there's a, there's quite a hot, significant degree of sort of co um, concentration that goes into it, but it's also yeah it's also like an enjoyable process so so if someone asks you this question what is uh, what music is for you how would you explain what if someone asked me what is music to me yes man that's a big old question it is <laughs> um I'm not sure I can answer that just on the spot there. This is oh, a very look. special cup of coffee, I'm guessing. So today <laughs> is a very special day. There you go. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a behind the scenes insight into <laughs> the life of Madame Jesus, punk rock uh, super goddess. Um, so uh, we got... There's, there's, there's the... <laughs> That's where been, I sleep. Uh, okay, I'll stop it there. Madam Jesus, is that your uh, alter persona? Yeah, that's the alter ego for the alter kind ego. of punk. Um, you know, scrolling through the face, but this <laughs> FYI, folks, if anyone comes for a podcast and an asks, <laughs> he takes you by surprise with the scrolling through the, the Facebook. <laughs> that he's that he kind of <laughs> springs on you whilst the cameras are rolling. So <laughs> this is so I'm new. Warning everybody. Um, You know, did I think that I'd be sitting here reacting to? <laughs> And it's so difficult. You have to turn to your head my all sort the time. of my sort of squat. <laughs> um, you know, being live, being live on television. <laughs> um, but there you have it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Madame Jesus is just kind of a an alter ego for this punk rock blue mm. punk rock blues thing that that I'm doing um, with a couple of friends of mine. Um, we've just released an EP. We released one last year as well. I think it's last year. Um, and then we just had one come out on the 4th of July. Um, what is EP? EP is like a four track. Mm. So like an album, but h half an album or a okay. third of an album, an EP. I can't even, couldn't even tell you what it, what it stands for, but, um, in fact, I'm. I, I would like to find out what I need to look. Uh, I need to be a uh, Jamie now. You yeah, know? Can you? Can you know you? the Jamie? Yeah, from um, uh, Joe Rogan podcast. He's a guy behind the scenes who b b looks for all the information. But while I'm looking for that, uh, you gonna tell me more about how? I mean, I I, I was following your uh, media and I've seen some of the stuff. Like uh, for you to go through the lockdown, that was quite a situation. Yeah, is, it, is that? kind of getting better now i mean like uk now are we 100 back to normal are we not back to normal um uh i think well i think as of the 20th of july or 19th of july or something like mm -hmm. that supposedly we're back to normal but it's not really um or the the restrictions have been lifted but i don't think you could really call it normal a lot of people are still wearing the you know wearing the masks and i think that for a long time you know there's not going to be a back to normal for i think the re the 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 kind of um the repercussions of of uh covid will be for yeah, a long yeah, time yeah, yeah. you know i don't know if this is the right one it's intellectual property that's what the ep i found 
Um, I googled EP meaning in music. Um, I don't know. What else should I look for? A record? Some with the records? Uh, what, what does the EP stand for, perhaps? Uh, well, because I know that LP stands for long play, as in... Inter internal pro protocol. Uh, I don't know. Oh, no. But is that, is that IP? No, so EP. Oh, EP, sorry. EP. Hey, English is my third language. EP. No. Extended play. Extended play. There you go. Commonly stands go. musical for recording, play. which is properly understood. Something, something. Oh, the full album. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. So there you go. Extended play. And then an album, it would be an LP, and that's a long play. So. So yeah, um, I guess that's that's cool. What. So we got it now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so and uh, that, yeah, that would be that's what we've released. We've released two EPs, both with four tracks on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where did you guys record it? Do you uh, have a studio? Uh, yeah. So so Mike, um, we recorded one at uh, Mike's studio, and then we recorded another at a, at a kind of rehearsal space that we use. And we just took the equipment there to mm. record it, but yeah. So, um, and and they're good. I mean, we, we're you know we're pleased with them. We're pleased with the the second one. But have I got any big news to report, or am I going to pretend that uh, there's some kind of buzz around it that there isn't? No, mm. <laughs> you know. Mm. Um, but we we you know we enjoyed the process, and I mean, you kind of then go through the same sort of protocol or bands and artists go through the same protocol not dissimilar to stunt work or acting or yeah, yeah, yeah. so on and so forth where you send it out to people or you try and get some radio play with it or this that and the other how is the i was wondering so we we skipped a little bit um so i asked you regarding going through the lockdown and um um, I don't know if you want to talk about the stuff we, we were going through. It's like the, there was like quite tough times, and and I saw mm. you battling with the. Um, I want you rather to tell it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. Uh, I mean, look, that's kind of more like the mental health stuff, um, and you know, as you know, as a as a friend, um, <coughs> I've had had past tense and have present tense continue to have m my own sort of struggles with um what i guess would be classed as mental health issues mm. and also with addiction issues um and you know the lockdown in particular i think at the i mean i'm i'm in recover i'm in sobriety from so from alcohol and, and recreational drugs for for a good few years now mm -hmm. um but i struggle with other less than healthy coping mechanisms mm. do you know what i mean pornography mm. um guilty uh, <laughs> right right <laughs> when um, you say struggle with pornography um is that it's just you want to watch just too much like too often or yeah and then it's progressive so then it becomes i mean this is the stuff where you know to have it on the podcast is a little bit i'm not i'm not sure to, oh, no. to what extent i want to disclose it's all up to you man. certain things but um you know it's progressive so obviously uh it then can lead on to webcams then can lead oh, on to okay. escorts okay, okay. Then can lead on to you know addiction in its nature as i understand it is progressive so mm. the same with drinking for mm. example or drugs you know yep. oh it all starts out as a bit of fun and someone has you know oh i started to, in doing cocaine at parties and someone would offer me a line and i'd start with a couple of lines and mm. then you know and so the story goes and then oh all of a sudden i was buying some and having a few lines in my on my own in my room and mm. then fast forward another year and i was having a grammar day and right right right, right. so so i think it's all, and you know for for me with alcohol it was like a similar sort of thing you know it starts out as one thing and ends up as another mm. and sadly um you know i've found that that has been you know that's 
um, been my experience with these other things as well. And I think I think they're all, um, and you know, as far as what you're, you know, answer your question, what you're asking about the lockdown, I mean, t to me, my, I think they're sort of. Uh, there's an element of addiction that's a kind of seeking a comfort, mm -hmm. um, you know, or see seeking a way to zone out, seeking mm. a way to relax, seeking a way to get out of kind of escape, the pre yeah. right? Escape, Look for escapism, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And um, you know, when the beginning of the lockdown came along, you know, for me as a self-employed musician, there I was at the beginning of March, looking at three months of work, right, all booked in. Um, you know, rolling out ahead of me. Oh, excellent! I can pay my bills for the next three months, and I've got things in the diary, and that uh, all feels yeah, good. Yeah. Fast forward to the middle of March, and within the space of a week, everything was gone, and that was almost like a mini sort of trauma in and of mm, itself mm. for me. And I'm, as I'm sure for a lot of other people, a lot of you people, know, like shock. You know, yeah. like a, like a, like a. Uh, you know, and and uh, I immediately noticed. You know, my sleep pattern went completely back to front, and my acting out by using that coping mechanism increased significantly. Mm -hmm. You know, in conjunction with my kind of stress levels, and I think you know um, that that is essentially, hopefully, goes some way to answering your question, but but then. But then the the year in general, you know, has just been. I mean, look, I know from the recovery circles that I'm in that there's been a significant number of people struggling with it, f falling off the wagon, relapsing, mm, mm. etc. And um, you know, for me, yeah, just a really dark time, just a really kind of, you know, given that given that okay, being a jobbing musician is my is my income alongside a couple of other bits and pieces um not drug dealing by the way um <laughs> but you know uh given that that's something that um not only earns me money but it i find to be a gives me a sense of purpose it gives me a sense of uh affirmation of sorts but i guess also you know the the, the feeling that i'm bringing something to the table yeah, as yeah, much yeah. as my life in general you know and what i can what i'm how i can serve other people you know by using my contribution that yeah, feeling of contribution like, yeah that you also um uh can feel appreciated and then you know someone needs you or wants you um and, and i mean like i am in similar you know i was in the very beginning in stunt industry film industry just way in taking the same path and um but I, I guess a lot of it did. Um, do you think it did help for people to get something something else out of their lives? I mean, there are so many kind of positive stories when someone just kind of everything stops and then they thought, oh, maybe I can do this, and they reinvent themselves. So, did you try to get to that path as well and kind of look into these things? No, I mean, I know a lot of people. I know, for example, for yourself, you took the initiative to be away or to go away and that served you well because someone oh, yeah, was speaking to you and saying, yeah. dude, this is how it still is in the UK. Stay where you are. Yeah, you know, Alex and I'm is referring, I went to <laughs> Bali for seven months, went for three weeks, ended up being there seven months. <laughs> yeah, which is great, you know, and I think that's uh, an example of, you know, taking the initiative to turn something around. As far as me, you know, what what a lot of it was as far as music's concerned is, oh, all the gigs have stopped. Okay, what can we do online? Let's mm. do stuff online. Well, me personally, I've got my own opinions of, A, what I, what I, how I feel about online anyway. And also as far as live gigs, I mean, I did one Zoom gig through my agency which was very strange. It was like me sat in my living room doing a gig to um, the client who'd booked me and then their family members that all kind of tuned in from different places mm. on the Zoom screen. And it was just like, no, this is this is strange. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they enjoyed it and it was fine and there was a paycheck as well, but it was just 
it's just not my vibe, you know. And I, I'm not in any hurry to kind of be like, oh, I'm going to be going on TikTok and <laughs> I'm going to be going on TikTok or I'm going to be, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm pretty old school like that. I think it's like, um, I first of all, I really struggle with sort of technology anyway. Like the, the fact that you've setting all this up just absolutely. It fuddles me. <laughs> I really shit with technology as well. I Dude, don't know. Uh, I just kind of I, I, well, together. there's shit, and then there's <laughs> and then there's shit. You know, and and this for you having to set this up, you you're being modest because you obviously know what you're doing. But and I can, uh, you know, but the guys who I work with, they're they're much more sort of technologically minded than I am. But mm. um, you know, I didn't. I'm. I wasn't. Uh, you know, maybe I could have been. Maybe I could have been more creative in trying to reinvent myself as far as, you know, taking the stuff online. But as it so happened, I had work that I've done on and off over the years for my brother anyway. So mm. I was kind of just doing that. And I think the other thing is I, I would be lying if I said that my things, my, my um, mental health stuff doesn't, uh, you know, seriously sometimes sort of compromise how i how able i feel to kind of take initiative or to take action or how clear my head feels um i i struggle with that you know mm. so oftentimes i feel like i'm sort of managing my mental and emotional health as much as i am doing anything else mm. um you know, and it can feel quite exhausting like that. And then it, it does sort of, uh, you know, I oftentimes don't, I might have the best of intentions about I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, but I don't have the the sort of mental clarity to yeah. to execute. During this time, I mean, um, so would you t say that um, during this lockdown was like the toughest you ever had in your life with the, like a mental um capacities and and uh, just kind of figuring out what the hell's going on or it, it was similar before or this was like the craziest one and the toughest one um i've had various points that i've been through difficulties i mean going into going through the rehabilitation like going to rehab that was pretty tough um mm. i've had sort of I, I had glandular fever when i was 16 and that sort of hung around on and off for years and i don't know i i, I would say as far as an immediate kind of an immediate shock of something affecting me yeah this was pretty bad it's yeah. pretty bad and do you think you learned some ways to cope with that i'm just also wondering um i mean there are so many people struggle with the same stuff you yeah know? yeah sure and across the world um you know the this the suicide level is just uh skyrocketed you know even like when i talked to my sister in latvia she said that you know in, in our little tiny country we have the numbers of suicide among teenagers is just incredible but obviously yeah. you, you these people who want to be outside want to hang out with their friends want to do the stuff all of a sudden they are cooped into you know and and um i mean I don't want to like my opinion about all the COVID is. I don't really want to say out loud, but a lot of it could be done a little bit different. Yeah, you know, I would be inclined um, to agree with that. I would yeah, be and uh, and that. especially like what is on the line, you know. And um, well, know, yeah, a, I mean that's yeah. No, I hear that's you. That's a long man. story. But what do you ha have any suggestions for people who kind of find themselves in a similar situation as uh, as you had? What are where the things would have helped you? I mean, look, <coughs> you know, ironically, when one's in a certain place or certainly, or I, I mean, I, I'll, I can refer to myself when I'm in a certain place, then usually the things that will help me are the things that I least feel like doing. Mm -hmm. So in other words, connecting, you know, reaching out and connecting with somebody else or, um, you know, uh, but that, that would be one one i would suggest you know um uh, what else um 
find your alter alter ego that that could be a pretty cool way that, to go for that yeah them. yeah we, you know <laughs> put a wig on and a dress and and play and play punk rock yeah man and it's like and you enlighten so many other people's days you know i i, I saw when you posted that stuff on facebook i saw people just like oh my god this is so funny you're so awesome it's like thanks for this and and you know i think that was already in my opinion certain way you coping with that and actually brightening other people's lives yeah well uh, hopefully i mean if that's the case then that's great i also know you know i also noticed that some of the stuff that i posted that was kind of brutally honest so for mm. example on a couple of occasions um you know i was visually in tears and i yeah i remember taking a picture of it and sort of putting it online and i was really surprised at the kind of how much that resonated with people mm. you know um, because the thing is like you had you know in this case you had enough balls to do that a lot of people mm. just do that in their pillows and no one knows about it i do it in my and pillow as well <laughs> but 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 you know what i mean like yeah, just yeah, going yeah, out yeah. there and saying like listen i'm you know going through all this crap and because at the end of the day we are uh beings of community of 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 uh we should be hanging out all the time with other people you know one mm. of the reasons i i was trying to sell you brazilian jiu jitsu uh the martial art which uh, when i started in bali uh, you literally go through uh, about an hour and a half hugging other people and as silly as it can sound um even though it's like it's a martial art when you train and the purpose is to f- learn how to protect yourself and all those kind of things but you end up just hanging out with all those people and you know you you li- give them these hugs and stuff and i always felt amazing afterwards yeah you yeah know? no it's it's really significant you know and that's one of the things also in the kind of aa meetings and the recovery meetings that i go to you know and i think off the back of what you do you know what's interesting you said about covid and your kind of opinions surrounding that i'm in concur you know i'm in concurrence with with um you i mean i think we've had outside of this we've had conversations about it and yeah um you know one doesn't want to get too conspiracy theory on it but certainly as far as things being maybe a, a extreme in the way they went about it and also you know to the detriment of other things i mean Mm. yes i get it's it's a physical health it's a viral thing and it's a physical health issue but the the knock-on effects in so many other areas it just doesn't seem like that there was a great deal of support for that and uh you know one of the things in the aa meetings is that is that physical you know is giving each other a hug or just being in a space mm. a, co- a com- you know a collective of people in a space together and that's what was a you know lockdown was like completely to remove that from people you know and if you live on your own which i happen to then that was very very isolating you know yeah. you can literally by law supposedly you know depending i had a i sort of it got to a point for me where it was like well irrespective of what the law is saying i'm going to go and see people anyway because i think it's so unhealthy that i can't yeah you know but at the at the beginning everyone was so sort of intoxicated with fear um you know which again you could argue a lot of that is just scaremongering it's the way they broadcast it it's the way the kind of propaganda machine of you know scaring the living daylights out of people and everyone was so frozen up by that that it was literally like a ghost town you could yeah, yeah. and and um really yeah really unhealthy for you know for here for here um in my opinion you for know. everything for everything physical mental it's uh you know as as soon as the uh mental is uh you know not nourished and and uh you just not feeling it physical it goes down as well i mean it's all connected it is listen me. we're gonna have this um uh segment we're gonna finish uh with something happier to talk about oh <laughs> we need to open the beer um so ooze. And now with the music, how does it look like for you? What is uh, what is on the map? Uh, you said so. You guys got with some something done. Um, that's yeah. Gonna be so we've released an EP that you can go and check out. Oh, thanks, Dean. If it, that you can go and check out online. If you just type in Madam Jesus to Apple Music, Spotify. Madam Jesus, tell me about how did that came across? Dude, that, I think that was literally just. 
I can't even remember, but it was very much a spontaneous. It was kind of like woke up at 3 a.m. <laughs> and had this concept of... Madam Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, wait, is that your stage name? That's the name of the band or the name of the alter ego oh, or nice, whatever. nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Because so I, th that, I thought it was just the alter ego thing. No, that's she. She is Madame Jesus, but then in the musical, in the musical kind of format, the band would then be just be called Madame Jesus. Awesome! As well. Next time when you come over for another podcast, okay, you bring I'll me another wig, so both of us we would be Madame okay, Jesus. Okay, okay. I had, I do actually have two wigs. I've got a blue one and uh, that red one. So awesome! We do that next time. We'll do the podcast in <laughs> wigs. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Oops, oops, oops. I don't know why I'm putting this music because like we have so much awesome music from you. What else do we have on YouTube? Do you have something similar to to this? This is such a good work, man. Birmingham, they love the governor. Say, cool, now we all did what we could do. Hey, <laughs> just proof. So if it wasn't a body double. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we covered uh, we covered some very uh, quite serious stuff in uh, our first bit. Um, now, tell me a little bit more about your acting uh, and about so you went to uh, the acting school or the drama yeah, Gil school? Guildford uh, Guildford School of Acting. They now call themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that a real school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they now call themselves GSA Conservatoire because they're so far up their own backside. That, backside, uh, that's a beautiful way to say an ass. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I did. I, I did three years there, um, BA, uh, BA honours in performing arts, essentially classically classically trained actor. Um, and then, yeah, I think as I, as I said, that was a kind of, when I was in high school, it was like what, you know, where I was at, they, they sit you down and okay, what are you, what would you like to do? And mm. so on and so forth. And I didn't necessarily know. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, my drama teacher, that that's just something that I was kind of naturally able in that in that area and uh he suggested it and i thought mm, drama okay quite like that lesson at school not too much writing you mm. know usually quite fun not a bad shout and then when i got to drama school it was like a fucking boot camp you know it was like a a full-time um you know hit me like a ton of bricks really but uh what were, what were the biggest challenges what do you can remember from the drum school uh it was it was it was just it was pretty full-on you know and i think people who i think you get a, an array of people who go there but often the, the focus is quite you know if you'd imagine i went there because i thought that drama was a fun lesson mm, and mm. other people go there because it's their lifelong ambition to mm. you know similar than what you're just saying a minute ago off uh, off the podcast about the stunts it's like you know there's varying i was yes i was good at it and you know to an extent i enjoyed it but i wasn't driven you know, in the same way that I have been about the music, for example. So I think the, I suppose a good thing that came out of it was I kind of found my passion for music whilst I was there. It wasn't directly linked to drama school, but it was at the same time in my life. Um, but look, I, I still I still enjoy it. And I still, I think that the performing arts side of it stood me in good stead, you know, as far as being regimented about the process of rehearsal mm. being regiment uh, you know learning the craft of performing something you know fresh again and again because mm -hmm. of course to make it look you know you'll know from having worked in the industry that 
you know, maybe you're doing something 10, 15 times oh, yeah, before they get the, the one that you... And it's similar with gigs. You know, sometimes you go to a gig and you have to pr produce the goods irrespective of how you're feeling and, you know, you're there, you're the centre of attention and, you've, and you're and you providing a service, which is entertainment. Mm. So you have to kind of step into that role whether you want to be doing that or not. And I think the discipline those sides of it from drama school elements of it were good um you know having said that when i finished i didn't get an agent and a lot of people didn't i would say it was maybe 70 30 or 80 20 to those that that did get signed with an agent straight um out of drama school and then uh, as i've you know as i've just explained um, I think it's that thing to be driven about it, you know, how dr driven. And by the time I'd finished the three years, I was almost actually the opposite. You know, I was kind of over mm. it. Um, so I, I, I still do think that, you know, I would do well to get some headshots and, you know, try and get some representation um because it's something that I feel able to do, it's something that I would be able to do if I were given, you know, I've, I've actually, I'm actually with a, a character modeling agency called Ugly Models. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you mentioned yeah, about yeah. that one. No, no word of a lie. So they're, <laughs> so they're a character modeling agency. In their How paper. is it possible you're such a good looking man? Oh, well, <laughs> I think you're just flattering me. <laughs> never, never. Uh, look, they're, they're not, uh, yeah, they're kind of character faces. Yeah. They've got all sorts on there. But, you know, I think I, I would m maybe, I'm very glad you consider me good looking. Good looking, very handsome man. Um, yeah. And I think that other people would, you know, certain other people would consider me to be handsome as well, but certainly not in the conventional sense oh, you know. what do they know conventional what do they know can go to the backside. yeah <laughs> there you go. but but yeah i mean that's um so i've had some castings ironically i've had some castings by default through them hmm. and that was just an open audition for their books that i walked into and it was almost like there's an irony that's that i've found significant for things in life is oh when all of a sudden when you when you're not trying too hard and you're not putting too much expectation something ends up coming your yeah. way anyway so they so i've had some castings with them and i've had some jobs with them and that's a similar you know okay even if it's just commercials or whatever it's a similar process than an acting casting it's like you're in this situation you're this character you're walking along and you pick a certain product off the shelf and you're excited about it and you show it to you. So it's acting, elements of acting there. Um, Did you thought about uh, theatre as well? Like, so when you got to that act acting school, or was it specifically only for the uh, for the screen? No, it was theatre as well. And arguably, my, you know, they always used to go on about my voice, good resonant voice and projection. It and, is, and, it yeah. is beautiful. So that... <clears throat> you know, um, but but I'm just I just don't have the I'm not impassioned by it. Right. I'm not. You know, if someone said, "Oh, uh, you know," so if, if the people are watching this abroad, then there's uh, the RSC is the Royal Shakespeare Company here in the UK, and that's considered the sort of creme a la creme of like theatre within the UK. Shakespeare. Now, if someone came along to me and said oh, we, we'd like to offer you a main role in this with a run with the, the RSC somewhere in London or mm. whatever tomorrow. I It just doesn't. RSC, that's usually the product from the RADA, Royal Academy of... Uh, no, no, the, is, the RSC is the Royal Shakespeare Company. So oh, that's okay. like a theatre company. But they would hire people usually from RADA. From RADA, but also from Guildford, from Guildhall, oh. Lambda. You know, I, they, they I tried were, to get in RADA. Oh, did you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, when I just moved to London uh, about 10 years ago, I prepared all my uh, monologues uh, from Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, uh, there was something, Verona, um, I forgot already. Yeah, the two gentlemen the two of Verona. Two gentlemen of Verona, yes. It could be me and you. Yay. Two gentlemen of, it was, it was of about Bracknell. The, it, well, yeah, you go. it was about the dog. The, the dog heaves up his leg and makes a water against the gentlewoman's fartingale. Uh, lovely. <laughs> I okay. still remember a little bit Sounds 10 years ago. Yeah, dude. 
But I remember that when I got, went for audition, that uh, just people were like, "What the hell are you doing here?" <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, dude, I think that that's a testament to your to to you taking initiative. And I also, yeah, I've got a funny story as well about Rada because I got a final recall the first year. All right. And final recalls quite, you know, it's you go through a couple of different recall processes the first year. And I didn't actually get in anywhere the first year. I didn't even audition for Guildford, I, but I got a few. Oh, wait, no, sorry, it's this one. <laughs> yeah, the first year. Um, so then I thought, okay, well, at least, you know, I got some final recalls, so maybe there's something there. I'll try again next year. So I took the year out. <clears throat> and uh, spent it dr getting drunk and partying um, and not doing anything to do with getting into drama school. And then the, fu the, the year later, I went back. And with RADA, if you get a final recall, you kind of uh, bunny hop the, the first audition stage so they've kind of sh shortlisted you and then yeah okay you skip the first process and i remember vividly i went into london went in there to the room and they're all sat this kind of like x factor for people who are not familiar with drama school audition similar thing there's a panel of people and i went in and they said ah oh, yes alex yes we remember you from last year yes you did this we thought it was good blah 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 and they said, so what have you been up to in the last year? What have you been doing in order to prepare for your second? Because, again, they are so far up their own ass that they think that you've been spending your time. Anyways, I'd done one play, I think, one like amateur dramatics play. And I was like, oh, well, I was in this in back in Oxford. And they were like, oh, oh right. So what was the name of the play? And I just froze and I was like, fuck, I can't even remember what the name of the play was. And in that moment, I knew that that was the end of that audition. So, uh, you know, because if you go into a RADA audition and you tell them they've been in a play and then you cannot tell them the name of the play you were in, which I genuinely couldn't remember. So it's just like, this guy doesn't give a shit. And, uh, they, were Do you right, remember and now? they were right. Do you remember now? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, man. So that's that's the acting, you know. That's the acting side. I've like, done a few jobs. I've done a few jobs. I've done a Nintendo commercial and the Tesco's and and uh, a ga some gambling one. And you know, I've had. I, I nearly had a, a a Miller Light. Ironically enough, seeing as I don't drink, I nearly had a Miller Light one last year filming in Slovenia, which would have been ten grand. And man, I could have done with ten grand. But. Um, yeah, look, I mean, never say never. What happened? What happened? Well, I just got, it was like, a, you know, there was like three of us left. Oh, okay, you, know, you get like, that far in. Check that's your passport, you know, make sure everything and this and this, and it's going to be next week, and you definitely make it, and, you know, pit to the post, so probably down to the last two or three. So Yeah, yeah. But you know how it goes. Oh, yeah, you know, so. yeah. But, you know, look, I, I think it's one of those kind of, it's a string to my bow, and maybe at some point in the future... You know, I should put a little, I should invest a little bit of energy in because I know I do have an interesting look and a good voice and, you know, I've ticked some of the boxes, but it's also a very competitive industry and, um, you know, there's lots of people out there who want to do it and lots of people who are... Yeah, but the, the, it, I think it also always goes down to, like, how much do you want it? Um, exactly, yeah, yeah. But the question is, like, for you, when, when I would say... Alex, uh, it's not about money. It's about not about anything. What would you do? What is the thing you want to do? Would it be acting or would it be music? It would definitely be music. Yeah. yeah. So no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. And then the acting is just like, oh yeah, I can make you know, I can use some money basically. Right. That's how it's been. Right. right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think the music, the side of it is, yeah. That's where the that's where the passion is. That's where I'll kind of go out my way, like someone who had the same degree of passion about acting would go and do something for you know they would take themselves off to a theater production for free and this and that and the other that's the same as me in the beginning you know doing things doing passion projects and all the rest of it which has been connected to music but yeah well you know i mean it's on the back burner and for the for, from the music like what would you say is the most like inspiring for you I found another track of you. It's it's a lot of them on YouTube. Yeah, this is the, I did I recorded these all in the kind of 
in the set the session I had up at their studio. It's late in the evening. It is actually late in the evening. Wondering what past ten And now we have these shades. It's such a different look. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, man. Oh dude, you're so good. And then she asked. If you'd like to book uh, for your wedding, bar mitzvah, funeral. Um, contact a live network entertainment. But definitely ask for the uh, uh, blonde hair. Yeah. And if you'd like a compare for your event, <laughs> then contact Renaz. Yeah, do not hire Renaz. <laughs> do, no, do hire Renaz because I think he's great. I think he's very good at his. Um, Dude. He's comparing stuff yeah. And also the stand-up as well To, to flip reverse it over Oh, go we, for it, we're yeah. talking about Alex here Alex this, Alex Go that, for it, yeah Which is understandable Seeing as you invited me on here But in the same breath I will say You know, I was keeping in touch I keep uh, on track with your socials And you've been in Bali And i seen some of your stand-up stuff And I really enjoyed it actually, and I Thanks. think it's good good vibes, man. Thank so. you so much, man. It's it's definitely been uh, that um, that um, bread has been an oven for a very long time because I I really wanted to do it what like since I can remember myself, um, but Bali just had this perfect condition of perfect uh, people, environment, and community. Yeah. And you know, shout out to uh, uh, Bali Comedy Club, Chris. <laughs> hey, my man. Uh, you're probably not going to be watching this, um, but yeah. So uh, Chris, uh, who is the in charge of the club, he's like uh, his nickname is Papa. So okay. he's an Italian guy, like bigger Italian Big guy, daddy. Yeah, and everyone calls him Papa because. Sure. Um, and yeah, thanks to him, uh, you know, Bali Comedy Club is existing and is is been doing amazing and improved so much. And one of the things where they change, it used to be open mic. So you would come in and say, "Hey, Chris, um, I would like to do five minutes," and then yeah, sure. To, you know, come next Friday and do your five minutes. Um, and usually, and very often, people think they're funny and they have a material, but they get on stage, they're very unprepared. Yeah. And, you know, being funny among your friends is not the same as being funny on the stage. That's for sure. And, yeah. uh, Stagecraft so, as well. And yeah, and the thing what he changed now, anyone who gets on the stage first does the rehearsal. So then there's other comedians sitting around and you go with your uh, set. And the greatest thing about it is uh, then they can just tell you straight away, this works, change that, add that, give you even ideas, give you even jokes, That's you know? Really and, cool, yeah. Oh, and, and it's, it helps so much. But I remember the first time I, I did my, my set in front of all these comedians, I thought I was just going to go through the, th through the floor because no one was laughing. And they were just like staring at me. And I was like, fuck. And I started getting worried more and more. And I was like rushing in through my set. And I was like, fuck. Like you know what's now, and 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 they said, oh, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's pretty good set. Yeah, I think you're ready. So what do you mean, guys? Uh, we never laugh. That's they say we never laugh because we seriously we listen to your material, we analyze it, and yeah, you know that's yeah, what we yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're, and they're looking at it from a performer perspective. Totally, sure. totally. Yeah, and. Um, and then, yeah, and then just f first three, four times were quite tough. You know, I think I I got one almost bomb kind of situation because I could just, the uh, crowd was like, nothing was going it. on. Yeah. But then uh, afterwards, you get, em, you get em. Yeah. But afterwards, you just, it's it's all about a craft, you know, and 100% um, you can have exactly the same material. But if you don't that have that confidence, that charisma, that um, using all the pauses on all, all those little things, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just not going to work. So, uh, but yeah, I, I definitely want to, you know, get back to it um, and I'm start looking around uh, here in London. Yeah, so I was just about to say. I was yeah, getting into so it. Uh, and I actually heard here in Bracknell, in our big city, there's apparently a really nice club, but they obviously been closed all this time. So now they should go back to normal uh, where um, I definitely going to go check it out. Yeah. Yeah, sweet man. Well, let me know when you do. Oh, dude, yeah. I need, I need, uh, I need what they call the hecklers. <laughs> yeah, I love my stage. I won't come and heckle. I'll, <laughs> I'll come and enjoy it. Yeah. Um, no, definitely. Stand up is uh, something what what suits my personality. I love to have that feeling of, you know, it can crash and burn or it can work out well. But then, I think for the last five sets, what I did in Bali, I did not have that feeling anymore. Because I was yeah, pretty sure, like, oh, I'm sure about this. This is going to work. And it yeah. worked pretty much all the time. And it's, a, you know, it's, a, to your credit, it's, I tip my hat because it's a, there you go, actually. Hey, I hey, literally you have tip a hat. my hat. Because it's a hard, 
you know, as far as as far as performing um, genres of kind of performing go, stand up is, yeah, you know, not it, it's it's pretty bare bones, and it's pre- it, I see it as a pretty tough one, you know, a, a pretty naked one, if you will, yeah. like music. You know, again, it's craft. Like, like you say, it's kind of, you know, with me, it's like you play those videos and they they look good, they sound good, and because I've done it a hundred times, mm. and two hundred times, you know, it's the rehearsal side of it and and all the rest of it. And and funny enough, in that, you know, sometimes having some shades on does help me because I'm because I'm less. Uh, I can be less conscious or it kind of blocks out the external so that I can mm. fully involve myself in the process. Mm. But, but you yeah. see, the thing, the thing is what you just said about we I rehearsed it a uh, hundred times or a thousand times. The thing is with stand-up is very similar. People don't sure, understand sure. that. Yeah, yeah, they don't. And, they, and, and to uh, make it look mm. as if you're, you know, when, when we go out and do gigs and, oh, you guys are having such a great time and thing and, you know, you make it look like nothing and it's like, well, yeah, you know, we are, oftentimes we are enjoying it and oftentimes we do probably make it look a lot more straightforward than, you know, but it wasn't always like that. You yeah. you have to kind of fall down, you have to go and play shit gigs and go and mess up and go and, you know, completely go to pieces on stage and all of that stuff and play the wrong chord and play the wrong note and sing the wrong chord, sing the wrong note and, you know, before you get it. Um, to a point you know and as you understand that's like stagecraft and that drama school helped me with that side of it you know realizing and I think when people want to get into this type of stuff and they're like oh I, yeah I fancy giving that a go and yeah and it's like okay well what does that mean does that mean you know it looks like fun so you're going to give it a go or does that mean you're still going to be sat here at 12 o'clock when we've done it 50 times to get it right yeah you know, stand, so stand up is things. very similar stand up is very very similar the same thing and it's like uh, people who come and they uh, the ones who think they're funny and they got on the stage for first couple of times and they actually are pretty good um, but then you run out of those stories you've been telling all your life then what in Bali, the biggest challenge was every week we had to come up with new material. Every freaking week. Yeah, so you, so you write sit it, there, yeah. you write it. And then I remember I ran out of my, like, the fun stories. And then I'm just like, okay, I need to find a premise and I need to write my shit. And then you just sit there and it's like, oh, my God, I, tomorrow I need to already pitch my, my, uh, um, my set and I have nothing, and you you start stressing and all of that stuff. And so one th- definitely thing is uh, with stand-up comedians, you should be writing your stuff every day. Like just like you go to work on the eight to five jobs, you should be writing and practicing all the time for sure. And then you just add 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 together, and here it is instead of like because I, I I like to procrastinate, right? And I'm like, oh, I still have three days, Don't two we days. All. Don't we all? Yeah. And then with stand-up, it's tough. Sometimes it is. Sometimes actually, I had two or three sets when I just wrote them like half an hour it's just ridiculous it's like yeah this all works yeah it just it all makes sense out, and yeah. just flows and sometimes yeah, so it days just where it doesn't and yeah and that, that's actually a le- really legit um thing that your uh chris is it the the dude at, at the comedy club in bali the bit that you mentioned about them having a rehearsal or having like a re- like a almost like a run through type thing vetting it if you will yeah. ahead of the performance night actually p- probably really beneficial both for the performers and for the and for the 100%. people who are coming to see it because you're kind of you know that's part and parcel of it 100% it? you're fine tuning the evening so that you're actually providing people with an, a legitimate evening of entertainment it's not kind of oh you know mm. stick it on sell some tickets and whatever and you know and the funny thing is, like, you're getting more worried about uh, uh, pitching it to uh, uh, other comedians than actually getting on the stage. Yeah, yeah. Because sure. their yeah, approval yeah, 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 yeah. their approval gives you that confidence and it's yeah. going to work, you know. And um, and very often there's such a little things, you know, um, someone, you use certain words and they will say, listen, uh, people are not going to get that word. You need a synonym. You need something similar, something for people easier to understand. And it, you make that little change, it makes huge difference difference yeah yeah. well 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 oh yeah so i'm just going through chris is this this guy here on the left here he is and who's this guy 
Oh, that's super amazing, Rhinoceros. <laughs> Rhinoceros. Yeah. Rhinoceros Latvionis. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just showing. This is the this is the uh, a collection of blueprints at the YouTube channel. Please follow me because it's only 22 <laughs> subscribers. That's all right. No, I need dude, to start dude, somewhere. dude. I yeah, and I read something only yesterday. I think that was like, which is very very timely that you should bring that up oh please follow because it's only 22 subscribers it'll be 23 time i get home this evening anyway. <laughs> but i read something just yesterday that was like you're not afraid to follow your dreams you're afraid to start you're afraid of starting t being seen to be starting small mm, that's a good one so follow his <laughs> po podcast so that we get to 222,000 subscribers. <laughs> but and, you but, see but but but, te but props to you man because Oof. that's that's uh no, but th that definitely doesn't stop me. I don't, I don't really care because I do this for so many other reasons. Yeah. You know, as I mentioned you before, I love to connect with people in a different level. So I find also all this really cool in, in information, which I probably wouldn't find out. And um, and I just love that these kind of things we can share and other people can hear them. Just like we're talking yeah, about cool, certain man. things what you were struggling with or what is how is it to be a musician? How is it to be an actor? And things like that. And there's so many people out there who who are like pondering like who should i do this should i not so what what is the kind of the deal but i think as long as you're just honest with yourself you know i'm doing this because no matter what uh you know i'm just gonna do it Fuck yeah it. that's that's awesome that's great that's More power to you that's the point and also like um one of the ways uh, me and alex we used to hang out we used to ride motorbikes uh doing motocross on indeed uh, on uh different different places so yeah that's the kind of hobby that's the kind of um yeah for me that's very much a, a, a sort of hobby uh a lot of fun takes you you know once you're on a bike you're kind of it's just a period of time where you can and and alex actually can do pretty cool tricks pretty cool jumps and legs to the side and all that shit. well thanks man it's well could awesome. could <laughs> I'm not sure that I still can. We'll see uh, if the weather ever, if we ever get a decent run and my bike is ever ready to, to ride, then we'll see. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. It's funny because I thought that when I met you, because it was through John T, and also because you are of sorts, you know, like an athlete and you were doing the, the stunt stuff and the bike stuff. And what I didn't realize initially on meeting you how, how, the kind of the other you know that we have that other thing in common with the performing arts and mm. the kind of um you know so that's that's been cool to kind of get to know a bit more about and and see you doing that side of things you know but i genuinely didn't at the time it was like okay so he's a you know he's <laughs> a he's an action sports athlete dude which is awesome you know because yeah. i don't like we would have been on a level anyway but the fact that then it transpired oh i've done a bit you know i do a bit of acting i do a bit of this and that and there's there's another commonality there if you will which yeah is, which is cool so yeah and i mean like for me bikes you know in two three years i got to the pretty good de like decent level um yeah. i never ridden bikes before but in the same time for me I think now I'm in that time in my life when I just kind of really try to scale and try to measure things what are actually important for me. Sure. You know, and I think I finally can say that I'm going kind of a, a right direction, doing with the podcast, with the stand up, with uh, uh, just kind of, you know, leaving all that, you know, stunts, as I told you before, even though I enjoy getting, you know, Peaky Blinders or Vikings or whatever projects. But I know that my heart is not really into that. Yeah, and that's you know, and I think like whoever is listening to this or watching this, um, I would definitely suggest you guys just just stop fucking around and be honest with yourself in the sense of, you know, oh, but if I do this, I look cool, or I do this. No, 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 no. stop it. Just really think about what you want to do. You know, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, and then be prepared to kind of put some, you know, roll your sleeves up and put some graft into it to think. But it's yeah, I mean, as far as the stunts and stuff is concerned as well, that's a, quite literally a dangerous game. So therefore, you know, that's something that probably career-wise is... Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. It's 
you know anything in any sort of athletic thing has a shelf life i would imagine i get i don't, I don't know but yeah well but i guess what you're saying is what you're saying is more significant is more legitimate in as much as you know your heart's not in it so yeah yeah, like, yeah yeah and and uh, unfortunately i see quite a lot of actually stunt performers who are there mainly for the money i think it looks a little bit there like i've got a sort of i'm having a sort of a spa epi spaz, epi spaz epi attack ep epileptic <laughs> I mean, I can show you... Show me, yeah. Do we want to... Yeah, see, because this is all much of a... Mu I mean, should we give them something... Could have a bit of Madame Jesus. Actually, before... Yeah, we oh, do ma Madame Jesus, but before we go in there, I want you to do one thing. Give me a one song which you think is very important in the sense of, like, inspiring you. You're looking up to some, like, the, is it specific band? And then is there a one specific song? probably going to be the hardest choice ever but just what comes in your head first alex fell asleep now <laughs> no alex is thinking that's almost too hard of a question um there's a, there's a song that i love but that's kind of different than uh, you know as far as being as far as an influence or whatever i genuinely have to say i don't think that there's i don't think that i could pick out a specific song mm. I, d I just don't think i can because when you were in your teenage years would you say there was a band yeah i, mean, I was big bands? into o oasis pretty oasis. big into oasis pretty big into the kings of leon you know but that was but but now it's like all sorts of music, you know, all sorts of classical, dance music, trance music, um, reggae, you know, even hip hop, or it's like all sorts I'll listen to. My my vision has kind of expanded much more. But there you go. I mean, that's a classic, whether you like it or you. Lump it. That is undoubtedly a classic. I think he said he became a millionaire four times in this in one week. Yeah, well, not that not that it's about becoming a millionaire, but but you can't. You know, whenever anyone rolls their eyes at Wonderwall as a song, you start playing it. Oh, you know, the kind of people who consider, yeah consider themselves to be a bit above it. It's like yeah, but it is Wonderwall. Mm. And and it is like you know universally known and recognised. So, I'm just know, wondering now if he, uh, when I post this on YouTube, if uh, they're gonna um, do the you know the um, the, um, the copyright, copyright thing. <laughs> there, you might be all right with just a, a short clip like you did. Yeah. So. Um, so no, nothing like specific. Um, what about in the UK? Any bands in UK? Yeah, I mean Oasis. Oasis is a UK band. They're from yeah. Manchester. Um, and then, as I say, Kings of Leon, I was big into them. Still, I still am. Um, you know, and they're from wherever it is out in Nashville, T Tennessee, like uh, the States. But um, there wasn't like a, you know, I didn't kind of, I wasn't like growing up and in my teens being like, oh, well, I want to be Elvis Presley or I want to be like this person or I want to be like that person. It was more just, you know, it was more just... I was enthusiastic about music. And bear in mind that I didn't even really start sort of playing the guitar until, you know, I was 19 or 20. So I was into music, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like, um, yeah, I've just never really had that kind of idolizing one particular okay. person or what. Fair enough. So Madam Jesus, right? There's quite a lot of different oh, stuff that's coming up. Oh, you'll have to put an E. You'll have to put M-A-D-A-M-E. M-A-D... It's a fun... A M E. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a funny old. There you yeah, go. There you go. Is, is it, it going to be video as well? It's a lyric video, so it's. Not. These chairs are perfect Have for you heard this. this tune. Listen, think... listen to the lyrics. Listen to the lyrics. So it's early in the morning and I've got to get to work So I'm putting on my makeup and I'm picking out skirts Well I know I'm laying fences but that makes no bones to me 
Who says I can't look sexy? Who says I can't be free? Now my Polish mate I work with, well he thinks I'm kind of strange. But he knows the crack, I ain't no slack, he loves me just the same. I guess we're just a couple of hooligans who get on kind of well. And if you ain't down with who we are, then you can go to hell. <laughs> or we married, pass the tape measure. <laughs> There you go, that's Madame sick. Jesus. That's sick, dude. In a dress as well. Lipstick. You dress, need a video, with. man. You need a, a music video. Dude, telling me, man. I know, I know. This is Aaron, the legend that is. Fantastic keyboard player, currently living in Estonia with oh, his really? girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, really? Is she, I presume she's Estonian. She's Estonian, yeah. But he's, he's British. He's British, yeah. Sick. I really like that concept also, you know, showing the lyrics so people can, uh, you know, sing, sing along. Thanks, Madam Jesus. Yeah, thanks, man. Madam Jesus. <laughs> Listen to that uh, <laughs> applause. That's brilliant. It's also brilliant how it, you can kind of, it, it's like an applause that you can, you can cut from you immediate cut. Yeah. <laughs> and it starts immediate as well. It's what like, else? Do, wait, wait. Oh, you have, say something funny. Um, what what do you call a fly with no wings? A walk. <laughs> Here you go. A fly no wings. A, a fly with no wings. A walk. Oh oh oh. But so so yeah. That's m maybe a. You know a fly. Yeah, the fl like buzz, fly. Buzz buzz fly. Yeah. yeah, like that one there. Yeah. Um. With no wings, it, well, it's no longer flying, so you just call it a walk. Oh. It's, it's a, like a play on words. Here you go. Here's the Madam Jesus right there. There she is. She is beautiful. Have you ever done, like, a proper drag? No. <laughs> should try. I, I always wanted to do one. I mean, you could like, argue that's pretty close to proper drag. Like no, no, that, that is, stuff, yeah. Like, there's no one did really... Did I shave my legs? No. But there is a... Nowadays, is. um all about variety it doesn't you know you can have full stash full beard yeah any, so i mean i guess that, that's things. pretty i was in and i tell you what man you found respect for uh chicks where, when they wear a tight dress because that is very revealing that it you is know, it a leaves, little bit too revealing yeah you yeah yeah i mean <laughs> can you sit like this and uh, <laughs> you definitely i definitely wouldn't be giving your viewers okay we definitely next time we wear wigs and we're wearing dresses and you sit like this uh, i did actually think should i come as madame jesus we so do that next we time do that next time we do that definitely next time yeah but you the deal is you have to wear oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i have some somewhere videos and yeah, photos renaz is not uh that's no issue with yeah us, I, used, I used to work in gay clubs for years you, you know there's one time i, I slid into slid into if you, uh, yeah, I have these the huge uh, stiletto boots uh, amazing I, yeah I just finished my go-go dancing set amazing and uh, there was the the drag queens were chilling and uh, uh, so they took their boots off and I just put it on and just pranced around and I almost broke my ankle because it's like you it's a skill it's, dude it's a 100%. tough gig and the same with these dresses it's like like when I when I put it on I was like man you know girls have a tough gig with this oh, like yeah. as in any little lumps and bumps, and I'm not referring to the gentle area. And this yeah, is, yeah. I'm to your your stomach, your here, your abs are poking yeah, out. Yeah, it's like yeah. whoa, it doesn't, you know, <laughs> like there's no we're nowhere to hide. How did it start? Uh, how did the Ma Madam Jesus uh, came alive? Uh, I said earlier, like it literally. I think it was just ca it came in my head at like some silly hour of the morning, and then and then as far as the music. I'd actually been in the studio recording some kind of solo, more acoustic songs with my buddy, and then we ended up finishing. He smoked a joint, and then we just had a big old blues jam, and it was basically just a kind of hammering away, like, cathartic. You know, sometimes you'll just have a jam. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Same as maybe in combat sports, you'd have a sparring session or whatever. Mm. Um, I don't know. I know jamming very well. I used to be yeah. in a band. I, I know what jamming is. Okay, sorry, 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 dude. <laughs> How sorry, dare dude. you? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, please accept my <laughs> sincere apology. Do you still have your beard? Do you? Uh, uh, I'm done the second one. Well, give me. I'll open the third one. Don't. don't. And I know you need to toilet. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I'm good. I'm good. Oh, what happened there? No, nothing. There's just. Uh, I'm just gonna put the. 
Okay, while I'm doing this, you need to tell a story. Tell another joke about f- fly. Uh, that's the only one I got about flies. <laughs> um, I can. Tell For those who don't know what what we're drinking here, it's not alcoholic beer. But honest to God, I feel I'm I'm getting a little buzz buzz. Maybe because we're talking about flies here. I don't know. There you go. Whatever you feel, man. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, this knife looks so scary. I actually bought this uh, equipment, equipment now, but the set for camping, like all these plates and everything, and th- that knife came with it as well. That's oh, like is it? Massive knife. Knife. Did you buy? But th- this. Oh, sorry, we we. Whoo, Madam Jesus. Oh uh, yeah, okay, Madam Jesus. Um, yeah, that was it. We were just jamming, and uh, it was like a kind of throwaway jam, you know, that we had, and then we were like, man, this sounds pretty cool, and then he just. Puts a couple of hung a couple of mics up, not dissimilar to these. Hung a couple of mics up in the room, and then recorded it. And then he ended up cutting like a ten minute jam into like a three minute song called "Play 'Em Away," which is Madame Jesus tune on the first EP. And that was how it that was how it was born. Nice. And Madame Jesus also has a um, Madame Jesus he has also Instagram account. Here you go. Oh baby, what do we have here? That's a blue wig. Yeah. White boys up, up now. I even had some black. Uh, oh EP, black. that's the announcement of EP. Yeah, that was from whenever it was a week, couple of weeks ago. Oh, oh there's a strappy, t- another strappy top that I bought at Primark, aka Primani in London, <laughs> in in Marble Arch, and I was so excited. To try on the you top, put, is that the I bus? put it on on the on the Oxford tube on the way back <laughs> from London. Nice. I just had to try it on to see if it it, it would fit. <laughs> so it was four pounds, I think. So if you want a bargain strappy top, go to. Nice. And then we have some action something here going running, on. Running my mouth about something or other. Uh, well, there's my buddy Marek, who I do uh, labouring for. He's a builder and a very skilled one too. Mm. He's a Polish fella and he's lovely and I'm very fond of him and I do labouring work for him in between gigs and that's the song Wide Boys was written about that. You'll see him You see him there as well. Scroll, don't scroll. Yeah, there you go. There's me and, there's me and Marek. In a mask, that's good. That's yeah, good. in our m- COVID masks, yeah. And well, listen, but like the the way you sing, I mean, I, I would definitely pay money for to come and see you perform, you know, and it, it is in many ways, um, it, it is a shame that there's um, something is not right, right in this, whether the industry or whatever that you can't make, you know, living with what you do, freaking awesome. Thanks. And man. what you love doing. So Thanks, man. yeah, well, you know, uh, it's yeah, it's uh, it's there's a lot of competition. I think a friend of mine was telling me forty thousand songs are released every single day on forty thousand Spo- on Spotify. Wow, forty thousand songs every released day. every single day. It's wi- while uh, worldwide, worldwide, yeah, yeah. but still, we're just in Bracknell. Hell of a hell of a number, <laughs> isn't it? But. But look, I mean, we 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 do make you know I do make I do make decent money from doing covers gigs, which I enjoy. So, and you know, I think the the cool thing about Madame Jesus is that because of its nature, there isn't that pressure there. You know, I, the band I was in before, there was almost a feeling of it's got to be X or we've got to do we've got to it's got to be a success in inverted commas whatever you. Whereas this now has more been like. If we're not having fun, then we're just not fuck doing it. it. You know, forget about it. So, in on the one hand, it's it's actually more liberated. It's more of an enjoyable project. But we'll see. You know, I mean, it's uh, you you uh, things things can happen. Yeah. Things do happen. You know, it's and it's it's. I mean, it's such a good point regarding if you don't have fun, fuck it and. Um, I just recently watched the uh, documentary about Metallica. Did you see it on Netflix? Mm-mm. So it was all. I've ab- seen that it's there. Yeah, it. it was. It was painful to watch it, man. Really, the issues they had among each other, the the uh, all these kind of like, uh, is it going to be a drum solo this long, or are we going to do this? It's like, 
And, and Dude, I'm going to watch it tonight. Yeah, off the back of you talking about it, I'm going to watch yeah, it. Yeah, the main main guy, he had his issues, like quite serious issues. He went to rehab and then he came back. And then just that whole communication is just so, yeah, it was pain, oh, it's painful hardcore, to watch. Man, you know, and then all of a sudden, what, there's a million, you know, there's they've signed a label. And so then it's the pressure of like, oh, well... You know, we don't care about your issues, your interpersonal issues. Mm. You've got, you've commit, you've, you're contracted to this and that. And that's the shit, you know, they'll break people, you know. Yeah. Like, I remember Prince, like, used to have, like, play gigs with Slave written on his, written on his face. Yeah. In other words, like, because he felt like he was enslaved to his label and to the, to the contract. And so that was the reason why he changed his name to a symbol. Was it was it that that how it Quite started? Possibly, I don't know. You could, yeah, because yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. I don't. I'm not going to have a name because they owned his name as a prince, I and then he's like, surprised, yeah. this is going to be my symbol, which everyone's going to know that what it means. Yeah, I mean that type that type of thing is you know that there's to, it's ten to the dozen stories like that, and so yeah, as soon as as soon as the money comes in, and this is this is the other thing, like when. It's interesting how we say, like, I want to be successful, I'll be this and this. But when you become successful, when that money's coming in, there's so many other issues are coming up, like these horrible, you know, ghosts. And uh, people don't understand that. And, yeah, yeah. It, and even, like, with just being successful or famous, like the influencers, the ones who have all these followers or whatever. I had a friend of mine who got hacked, and, they, and he would literally, they tried to blackmail him, and, and they, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, so he pay, pays money, and then he could get his account back. And, yeah, it's like, decide, like, do you want to be famous? Do you want to be... End of a day, we just want to do some stuff what makes us happy, and if we can influence people and for them to feel better and to th them to reach yeah, their happiness. Yeah, I, I think you've got to remain true to your, you know, if like if the if the success or the followers, because look, let's not, you know, it's it's like the more if if you have more followers, for example, you build up your podcast. Um, subscribers or whatever or and vice versa the same with the music then that's great but i think the question is you know are we remaining true yeah like i'm not going to speak on your behalf but for me it's like am i remaining true to myself with the madam jesus stuff if i is then if i am sorry then it's authentic mm. if i'm like oh, I'm going to become this, that, or the other in order to get more yeah, followers. Yeah, you yeah. know, and I don't get that sense at all about you either. It's like, I'm doing yeah. a podcast. This is going to be my podcast. Yeah. This is this is what it's for. These, these I'm aware of the reasons why I'm doing it. And it's, I think it's that thing. You know, because obviously for someone like me, it, having played a few of those videos, you know, it's kind of like, you can understand that over the years I've heard, oh, why don't you go on The Voice or, oh, you should go on X Factor or what? And I would never been like, I just know enough to know that I would never go on those mm. type of shows because even if I did get to this stage or that stage or the final of it or whatever, it's like, as soon as you're on that type of thing, you are, that that's, that's where you're at. You know? yeah. You're going to be signing a contract that says... You can do this, you can do that, you can't do that, you right. can't say that, right. you can't, yeah. Right. You know. I had actually a friend of mine, uh, She uh, she's from Thailand, amazing, very, uh, very uh, good singer, and hopefully I'm going to get her on my podcast as well, we're talking about this. So she told me a story that she was offered to go on X Factor and play, uh, be kind of the group of these Asian girls, and they basically almost like pretending that they're uh, sisters, like come up with a story, that's that. Yeah. And then, and she told me that if I would sign that contract, you know, they literally would own my ass for like next years or whatever. I wouldn't be allowed to do anything. Uh, what I want to do, I wouldn't be allowed to write my music, to play my music. Yeah. yeah, and and that is that is what Prince had on his face tattooed. It's just so it's, yeah. true. And um, when you think with the big, you think with big stars like that, it's like, oh, well, it can't be. You know, it can't be when they're at that level. Oh, it's it like, is. Yeah, it is. It is. Because they've signed something somewhere that says that's the way. Yeah, and is. if they not, don't follow, then 10 lawyers are going to attack and, and strip um, everything from you. So, yeah. That is so. And th then you then you trying to figure out, so what is happiness? You know, what, like, because everyone is asking that question, what is happiness? And when I was in Bali, I could just see these people, shorts, flip-flops, 
a, a, a surfboard, you know, have a couple hundreds in their account and they're happy. You know, that's come really, come here. That's really significant. Yeah, that's come really here UK and, and you tell someone that, oh yeah, I I have pretty much nothing. I, I live in a rented place and and I do these things what I enjoy to do. And like, what, you don't have a mortgage? You don't have a, mm. a car? It's like, how can you be happy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's significant, man. It's significant. Yeah, as I said, you said to you before, I was like, just like, if you can get out of your bed, you have your arms, your legs, and and uh, you know, you can go and do enjoy yourself. That is that is happiness at the end of the day. I mean, strive for things what you want to do, but then always try to figure out how honest and true you are to yeah. yourself. Yeah, man. Um, more Dude, like listen, it. we spend about an hour and a half talking stuff, as you said, talking shit. But can we get in the very end if you play something on your guitar, if that is okay? I sure, will just restart sure, the yeah. cameras and adjust a little bit, and we will be back into second. Basically, we just realized it's 11 o'clock, and uh, I'm, uh, we're in my garden, <laughs> and uh, we should not play loud. I just already forgot how late it is. I have people who have to wake up early in the morning tomorrow. Anyways, so what we're going to do, Alex is just going to play a little bit of just the guitar action without singing, just to show us how it's done. Uh, don't worry about that. Even know where the so how, where's that? Where's this? Okay. Oh, it's quite close. I don't know if we can just, yeah, put it to guitar. <laughs> like a yoga class for you as well <laughs> yeah there you go Listen, such a pleasure, man. You're such a such a character. I really loved you to have here, and um, me, we're definitely gonna do it again with wigs. We're gonna do it during the day when we don't wake up anyone. <laughs> we can we can do it proper music stuff as well. Maybe next time we're gonna have better chairs. Dude, thank you so much, man. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having Boof. me. And that's mm. that was Alex Coleman. Thank you. Do people call you Cool Man? You can call me that if you cool like. Cool Man. I like cool man. I actually had uh, used to have a friend whose last name was Cool Manis. <laughs> Similar. Anyways, so this was uh, another episode with a collection of blueprints. We had an amazing musician here, slash actor, slash la super labor guy. <laughs> ah, yeah, baby. Nice one. Boom. 